30 seconds of logos followed by 30 seconds of titles telling you almost the exact same thing the logos already told you, equaling 60 full seconds of textual harassment. Also, this is actually two words, and if this logo was even close to worth a thousand words, you wouldn't have needed to spell it out with just the two. The whole point of the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words, is that the picture replaces the words, Damn it! This movie was made in 2006, so does that mean this actually takes place eight years ago? Or does the time shift based on when you watch it? This is like the next evolution of the present day title, and we don't stand for that nebulous shit around here. Man, this is the creepiest head and shoulders commercial I've ever seen, and that's including the one with Troy Polamalu. Ah, this movie starts with the most uncomfortable drug scene since, well, the entirety of Spun. Is that shower water absorbing into his head? Shouldn't it be at least a little of it dripping off his hair? And in case you thought we would give it some grace because of the art style, <laughs> grace. Jesus Christ, we get it! The first several minutes of this movie are the most effective anti-drug propaganda that the government never made. Nearly 20% of the population can now be classified as addicts. They filled that section out on their census form and everything, so we feel pretty confident in this number. Seriously, how would they possibly be able to throw this number out there without access to everyone's medical records? This is a f***ing Rotary Club administrator, not J. Edgar Hoover. Also, let's discuss the rotoscope animation here. Yes, it's a technical marvel, but it's also f***ing distracting. I can appreciate the talent and the art behind something without really liking that shit. I'm the same way with granny porn. Now you will notice that you can barely see this man, because he is wearing what is called a scramble suit. I know we apparently need this discount Mayor Pete's position, but does this audience? Wouldn't this technology be at least somewhat familiar to them? Once within, the scramble suit cannot be detected by even the latest in voice and facial recognition technology. Deep fakes. This is terrible phrase that Keanu Reeves whispered to Winona Ryder during the production of Destination Wedding somehow makes it into this script. I'm not going to tell you first what I do as an undercover officer. You know, for a movie so focused on visual flourish, it sure does spend a lot of time monologuing, doesn't it? These two charts are completely illegible to this audience at that distance, and this presentation is terrible. I put together a better PowerPoint for my third grade presentation on the variety of playground transmitted cooties and how to best avoid PTCs through practicing safe sliding. Like if you were a diabetic and you didn't have money for insulin. Insulin prices have increased almost tenfold since this movie came out, so it's the if part of that sentence that's the real sin. Repeat after me, but make it sound casual. Hey, I thought Robert Downey Jr. was the one with the suit that talked to him. That blazer. Oh yeah, and that tie. Substance D. I hate that Philip K. Dick named the gnarliest drug in this universe Substance D. Shouldn't a drug this powerful have a cooler name? Like Skag or Biscuit or Boner Maker? Wow, even in rotoscoped animation, they managed to make Keanu Reeves' beard look terrible. So, in the future, do people not have cervical spines? Because I'm racking my brain as to how screens at this angle could be useful without permanent neck damage. Also, just so we're clear, f transparent screens right in their useless, confusing asses. So, I'm assuming this means they are 97% sure this is Donna on the phone? But why does the unknown caller say 11.6%? If he's unknown, shouldn't that be 0%? Or is it saying that the caller is 11% unknown, in which case, shouldn't it just say who they are 89 percent sure it is? What does this 11% refer to? Also, wait a minute, five foot seven? Look, I've watched a lot of Winona Ryder movies, and if she's anything over 60 inches, I'll eat my shoe. What the hell is this crap? Sure, Donna's ID showed her rotoscope picture, but these are straight up f***ing cartoons, man. Also, this whole screen is a jumbled mess of overlapping useless info, but my favorite part is that to fill these pointless text boxes, they just replicated the script from Blade Runner. Replicated the script from Blade Runner? My point is, just like Blade Runner, none of this makes the least bit of sense. Also, also, sorry movie, despite the rhyme you learned, Anaheim is actually spelled with the E before the I, even though it's not pronounced like neighbor or way. Also times three, zip code 98345 is not in California, but is in Keyport, Washington, where there is a Navy depot that ranges and repairs torpedoes. Why is that important? It isn't. I'm just bored enough to actually do research for once. Why does RDJ's character have his actual glasses hanging from his shirt and his sunglasses on his face when he's in the restaurant? Sure, he's probably hopped up on the D, but if he's lucid enough to schedule this lunch date, drive here, and order breakfast, he's not that out of it. This is a world getting progressively worse. Can we not agree on that? Twitter! Fruit pies are for old ladies. False. There's actually an entire nine film cinematic universe that clearly shows f***ing fruit pies is also for Jason Biggs. Wrapped up in a little bow and give it to the public like a gift. I mean, come on, this is... I love Robert Downey Jr.'s stream of consciousness delivery in most movies, but in this one he truly sounds like the love child of Gary Busey and Matthew McConaughey. Bob's girl? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His girl. Although I know for a fact it never gets in her pants. Nonsense! I bet Keanu Reeves has never been denied a chance to get in pants. Hell, he probably has an open invitation from 90% of heterosexual women, and he still asks several times before he enters the pants. You give her a gift, and she gives you one. 
The thing about this rotoscoping, as unique as it is, is that it also hinders my ability to pick up on subtle performance nuances, and short-circuits the movie's ability to fully express humor or emotion. It's like the new Lion King, with the incredibly realistic visuals that stole all the animals' ability to emote, except instead of a crass commercial cash grab, this is a wild original experiment. Either way, though, the result is a sin. There's a great deal about Bob Arctor you're not aware of. For instance, did you know he's the one? Also, seriously, how can any house that holds Neo, Iron Man, and Carnage look this shitty on the outside? I can do that, but this is a boy's bike. Assuming your bicycle's gender. It's a nine-speed bike. Yeah, but even a nine-speed bike for 50 bucks is... Good God, this movie is so f***ing talky. It may look interesting, but this script has more dialogue than the Before trilogy combined. Are you sure there are only nine gears on this bike? Eight. Okay, eight, nine, whatever. Have you ever been the only sober person in a room full of people conversing when they're high as sh It's awful. And yet someone decided to make an entire movie about that experience. I see a Coke bottle. A soda pop bottle is correct. Soda pop? You don't get to say both soda and pop in the modern soda pop wars. You have to pick one, you centrist enabler. Who knows? Only after the entire set has been run. Con and knowing this movie, we're going to watch every last one of them with the accompanying incomprehensible medical and science jargon, aren't we? What do I do? I mean, how do you make it with that kind of sweet, unique, stubborn little chick? Movie is 43% men trying to figure out the magic secret to f***ing Donna, and this intercourse discourse is not exactly the kind of addicted to the D I thought we were talking about here. Do you know this man? So Hank is Donna in disguise, Fred is Bob in disguise, and Barris is pretty much involved in every relationship. Does this movie have a hard limit on the number of main performers? We don't care why you're here. We only care whether your evidence and material amount to anything. Yo, if this guy's gonna be a confidential informant for a conspiratorial case related to Substance D, shouldn't they be cajoling him and offering him coffee and <laughs> I don't think their asses have any other real leads. Nah, they only call in murders in this neighborhood. New Jersey. We're now deaf! What does Substance D even do to you? Paris is all chill but hyperverbal. Bob is chill but despondent. Freck is all tweaking and Ernie is irritable? Loud? Out of it? Point is, heroin has a very signature response. So does coke. Hell, so does alcohol. So what's the big effect of this seemingly extremely dangerous drug? Wearing your butt to bed. How'd I get here? This is not his beautiful house. This is not his beautiful wife. Okay, I know this is some sort of wine or oil bottle, but what is this? I'm just saying, I didn't think Mommy would display her special kitchen appliances this prominently, but nothing wrong with sex-positive interior decorating, I guess. My power mower. I'd hate my mower, too, if it was the only thing in my empty shed and I stored it diagonally right in front of the door that I left open for some reason, certainly not related to cinematic framing. Nothing would ever change. Nothing new could ever be expected. I bet Keanu had this exact same internal monologue when he was convinced to do another sequel to John Wick and The Matrix. The Five. Reaching into a scorching hot engine and pulling off the air filter with your bare f***ing hands. We almost died! We almost f***ing got it, man! Boy, Woody sure is, um, making choices with this performance, isn't he? I don't care if they're animated or not, cargo pants are definitely a sin. In fact, it's even worse when they're animated. Doing illegal drugs in the broad f***ing daylight, especially on the side of a busy highway. I'm just noticing that this car has been loaded onto this tow backwards, which on a busy expressway makes no sense. That means this vehicle would have had to turn around the wrong direction, so the back ends of both vehicles were facing each other. You'd never go last to ass on the expressway. Never! Maybe that's part of the plan. We're man! You know, this movie is pretty much half-baked, but with even less believable plot. We might only have minutes. Huh! <laughs> You check the wall sockets. I'll tear this bottle. Wait, wait, wait. You know, this movie's pretty much dude, where's my car? But without the humor or vast cultural significance. I know a good realtor. What reason should I give for selling? They always ask. They most certainly do not. This is f***ing L.A., man. Even if 20% of the city wasn't addicted to this substance and engaging in shady sales practices, realtors are looking for a sale, not a story about how you got the land and why you're leaving it. Yeah, we're all dreaming. Richard Linklater's Blade Runner seven years from now. Undoubtedly, you're either... Jim Barris or Ernie Luckman. Except you literally had a meeting with Fred and Barris in your office already. Is anyone in this movie in their right mind? You think he's high up in the, you know, Substance D network? No, which is why it's strange we're spending so much time and effort on this person's story, since the main objective is to get to Barris. We find out later they're pretty sure the rehab center is the supplier of this awful sh**. And why aren't they poking around there? This police department is as bad as the actual LAPD. Okay, I know this visual style has something to do with lucid dreams and all that, but I cannot abide that Keanu's right hand here has no fingers drawn out, especially when most everything else is in such great detail. I'm sure it's intentional and I know I should enjoy it, but f*** that hand, man. Step back, frickin' frack. 
Quentin Tarantino came in on the punch-up process of the script to literally write just this line. The most dangerous kind of person is the one who's afraid of his own shadow. What is that supposed to mean? The thesis statement of this entire f***ing movie. How long does this f***ing drug take to kick in? Keanu took this way back on the side of the interstate, and they've had time to call a tow truck, come all the way back home from almost San Diego, fix the car, and start hanging out inside. Some drugs may take a while to show their effects, sure, but this takes f***ing forever. So why is it so popular? Investigator has a bunch of individual monitor screens, but uses multiple ones to get one image of their prey cliché. Taking illegal drugs in full view of your policing colleagues. Also, wait. The mouth opens on this suit? I thought we'd previously seen Bob completely on the inside like he was Rhodey or something. So how would this oral orifice work? Are there other features in this suit that allow for bodily functions without removal? What is going on with this technology? They have scramble suits that conceal identities, super watches that can do complex calculations, and designer drugs, but they're still using f***ing FM radio? And bought a bottle of 2001 Azalea Springs Merlot. Merlot. Instead of quietly suffocating, Charles Frank began to hallucinate. Ah, yes, something totally different than what we've seen from this character during the entire movie. Your sins will be read to you ceaselessly. Hey, look, it's me! I'm in a movie! Where did Substance D come from? <laughs> it was funny to have this goofball in your movie back in 2006, wasn't it? <laughs> no. Oh, look, these two are getting f***ed up again. Look, if I wanted to watch a depressing narrative about hopeless drug addiction, I'd actually prefer to watch Requiem for a Dream. I'm sorry. I just don't like it when people grow up my body, and I have to watch out for that because I snort so much coke. Feeling like you need a reason to have agency over your own body. Awesome, our hero gets blocked by his longtime girlfriend, then picks up a rando co-ed to get his f*** on later that same night. Sure hope he gets the happy ending he deserves. No human being would ever sleep like this. Oh, jeez. Me, when I really think about what I've been watching for the last hour and change. Rotoscope porn, the anti-boner. Are you experiencing any difficulty identifying persons or objects? No, but I'm having trouble identifying any reason to care about any of these characters. Considering this movie is saving up all its twists for the last 10 minutes, and we're already 70 minutes in. Which includes 12 minutes of exposition, 55 minutes of random drug conversations, and only 3 minutes of character insight thanks to a kitchen cupboard door being left open. Projecting your girlfriend's naked nanas to the rest of your nearby co-workers. Nintendo DS games! Um, um. No one will be seated while Keanu's character fingers two elephants for several seconds. Something big is definitely going down in this house. This run-down, rubble-filled house. This narrates on for some... Jesus Christ, I haven't seen Keanu Reeves act this depressed since Point Break. So what does all this mean? I don't know, but I hope there's some f***ing answer by the end of this goddamn movie. Two hemispheres of my brain are competing? Yes. yes. Neither of these people, despite years of schooling, call Jinx and claim their coke. That's repeatedly indicated uh, throughout the course of my observations. By my estimates, it's been about six hours since Robert Downey Jr., the best part of this movie by far, has appeared on screen. So you're right. Getting off that, too. Good for him, but have we seen Bob smoke anything this whole movie? Then, I'm a what? No, he's on second. I'm who? First base! Sorry, this movie is so boring waiting for the big twist that I'm trying to entertain myself by running hundred-year-old vaudeville routines with fake Keanu or Fred or Bob. So Hank is Donna and Fred is Bob. Cool. Now that we know that, can we get a sex scene with them both in the scramble suits? It'd be like the biggest orgy two people ever had. Good news. I think I got you transferred to one of our farms. Hey, I'm not falling for this. My dad said he sent our dog Pebbles upstate to one of those things and I never saw her again. Your name is Bruce. My name is Bruce. Sure, let's throw in another name change for this f***ing character, since the story needs even more confusion to be as boring as possible. It matters when we can prove that New Path is the one growing, manufacturing, and distributing. I know this asshole looked around to see if anyone was listening, but why would they even be having this super covert discussion about a large drug ring in public at what looks like the Anaheim branch of Los Polios Hermanos? There's no other way to get in there. I couldn't, and think of how long I tried. Now that movie sounds interesting. Why aren't we watching that? I swear this either needed to be a 10 episode miniseries that could truly explore the book, or a 20 minute short film without all the random padding. Movie is a dick to, well, dick. Back to work, Bruce. I know these evil bastards are evil, but do they have to be so f***ing smug about it? A present for my friends at Thanksgiving. So the plan was to take an undercover agent and without his knowledge get him so hooked on D that he lost his mind, went to New Path, got assigned to work the fields, somehow found and picked the flowers, brought it back as evidence that would somehow be admissible in court, even with its circumstantial nature and his lessened mental state. And this, as we are known to say around here, works?
Aziz Light. Did you know that we create monthly exclusive videos for our Sin Club members? Bonus outtakes. I don't know, Peter. Meth is a hell of a drug. Extra Sins videos. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. And even member chosen sin commentaries. I love this. <laughs> I love this this kind of uh, of a sin because it's just it's so silly. Pick our next video and see the exclusives at Patreon.com/slash/CinemaSin, or click the link in the description below. Spider-Man is not a parade. You do not need to stop traffic for Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> like if you are a diabetic and you didn't have money for insulin. Yeah, I know all about your disease. You're at some party and all the guys are passing around the insulins. Hey, suit lady, I kind of feel bad calling you suit lady, you know? I think I should probably give you a name. Like Liz. No, no, no. God, that's, that's weird. What about Karen? Your registration? Oh. Uh. Hurry up, meow. Fugazi, Fugazi, it's a wazzy, it's a woozy, it's a f fairy dust. In this day and age, we live in a society. I am an FBI agent! We are back! We are back! We're so back in action! A thousand pounds traveling at 80 miles per hour. I figured it out. And, you know, just so we're talking about the same thing. Time travel. You want me to hit you? That's right. What, like in the <laughs> face? <laughs> Surprise me. All right. All right, all right, all right. We can be married when I return. <clears throat> of course. This isn't so bad, huh? Making bucks, getting exercise, working outside. Hey.